The Humana People to People Organization is an international movement that was established in South Africa in 1995. Now, this is a non-profit organization that works with disadvantaged communities pretty much to improve their economic situation, their health situation, their education, as well as generally the social well-being of local communities. Now, Humana runs different projects in this regard to kind of meet their mandate. And we are joined now in studio by Sina Partnership Manager, National Partnership in Development Office of Humana People to People South Africa, Mr. Tonderai Chikono. It's good to have you. Good morning. Good morning, Sabo, and good morning to your lovely, hardworking viewers out there. Listen, it, it sounds like a lot of work that you're covering. You're in the continent. How do you make it to South Africa, and uh, how involved are you in South Africa, and in, in, in which specific areas? Humana was founded on the fundamental principles of solidarity humanism, mm -hmm. an ordinary person helping another ordinary person mm -hmm. in the communities. Try to seek common solution to the challenges that the people face. And what we did was when we established Humana People to People in Africa, in Zimbabwe to be precise, in the years of 1980, we started to expand to other countries. And we realized that in those communities that we are working with, if you are poor, you are sort of vulnerable. Mm -hmm. To a great extent, you are actually dehumanized. Mm -hmm. So our main thrust is to work with the people shoulder 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 to shoulder with the poor people try to create development and try to make them reclaim their social dignity and, so, and, and how easy it is as, as an ngo to work in the rest of africa uh, in south africa and how different is it working in these different regions you could say um the challenges that you find in the communities they are not very different from each other i have gotten uh, an opportunity to travel to many countries doing this development work. What you find as challenges are almost the same. We are one people. Mm. That's what some other people say, and that's what we are realizing. And when we came in 1995 to South Africa, start with a project in Dorenkop in Soweto that, uh, that is called Child Aid. That is a holistic community development project that empowers people, organize them to be self-deciding bodies, and try to create community functional structures for them to function as uh, development practitioners and on the development was is about the people. It's not about human people to people. It's not about the government. It's about the people themselves. So these are our experiences. Now you've been doing this for close to two decades now in, in, in South Africa in particular. Uh, what have you seen as the impact, particularly because you believe that uh, communities should actually be self-sustaining. They should take the responsibility for themselves uh, to, to develop themselves and improve their situation. How do you achieve that? We achieve that by creating functional and very viable community structures. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, if we talk of child aid, we have what we call child care communities um, that are there to take the issues of the children forward. We have ECD communities that we have as well, working out in the communities. Mm -hmm. So we try to create, um, first we sell the idea that development is about the people themselves, so they should own the projects that yeah. they are doing. Yeah. And, um, Second uh, level is to create those uh, viable and functional community structures, working, of course, in networking and close collaboration with government departments and other stakeholders who may be there. There might be other NPOs or NGOs who are in the existing areas where we are operating. We instill these values of creating development in the people that even if when we have left as humana people to people, when finding dries out, we don't just dump people. Mm. We, have, we know from experience, we hear about um, organizing coming and then leave eventually when the man dries up. Mm. And then there are no co viable community structures to mm. carry on. Mm. But our projects, they are very sustainable. That's one of the things that you might see as a common so thing in some, some of the projects that have rubbed shoulders with uh, humana, are they still running today and they are self-sustaining? Yes, they are still mm -hmm. running. We are operating um, in five provinces, namely Gauteng, we are in Limpopo, we are in, Haute, uh, we are in Pumalanga, mm -hmm. we are in the Eastern Cape, as well as the KZN, where we have our national offices. And all these projects, sometimes we might have even more than one. It's not enough to have one project in, um, in an area, but we might have more than one Humana project. All our projects, they are sort of built on each other. So it would be very good to have those variety of projects from Humana it would be very good if there are other projects which are existing already from other organizations. Well, you've opened up the movement. Anybody can be a part of Humana by yes. planting a, a tree, simple, yes. right? Yes. Uh, tell us about that campaign. We have undertook as an organization that we should make sure that communities know the importance of having a tree 
in the yard or in the vicinity nearby where they are where they are staying. We are looking at issues of global warming. It might seem like that subject is might seem like far fetched, but actually the repercussions of global warming and climate change, we are starting to feel them, we are starting to see them very soon or in the near future, then we they might actually increase. So we are going for this of uh, planting to uh, one million trees, and we've organized ourselves in provinces where we are operating with our projects, mobilize the people we are working with, our volunteers, government departments, and other well-wishers. And we have been on social uh, media as well, advertising this campaign that whoever wants to join in, they can come. So whoever wants to join in, they can actually come, because we are still in that process. It's a very big goal, yeah. and some might look at us and think that we are very naive to yeah. do that, something yeah. like that. But it shows the politics that we are building and say it's very good to have natural resources like trees. Well, there you go, uh, Tondara Chikono from uh, the organization Humana People to People. If you'd like to get involved with this particular campaign of planting trees or any other initiative that you heard of this morning, give us a call on 011-791-5658. Thank you for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you very much, Tabo, for having us in the studio. Essential Amatole is an essential oil farming operation located in the Amatole district in the Eastern Cape. Its core business is to propagate, cultivate and distill high quality essential oils and value added products for the local, national and international markets. The organization has a number of long term goals which include creating a number of sustainable jobs and contributing to the establishment of an economic infrastructure. We established Essential Amatole as a community private public partnership to pursue rural development in this area in the Eastern Cape. This is a farming operation which propagates essential oil plants. We have a, a range from rose geranium through to peppermint. We cultivate the plants. Once the plants are mature, we then harvest them and we take those harvested leaves and branches and we distill them using steam to extract the essential oil. That essential oil is then filtered and stored and it is sold as bulk oil to the international market as well as the national market. We also have used the oils to add value to products, soaps, creams, hand and body lotions and other things that are used by people on an everyday basis. Underpinning the project is our commitment to creating jobs in the rural areas through agriculture. Our development goal is to develop a value chain with the aim over time of expanding to establish a strong essential oils industry in the Eastern Cape. The approach that we've taken around land acquisition is that we targeting negotiating with communities to join in the farming operation to get their land productive using essential oils as the farming operation. The one form of land use arrangement is leasing from owners in the villages, leasing their land. Another form has been through leasing uh, government farmland from the uh, two big uh, government institutions that focus on agriculture.